Four-year-old gets angry if she does something wrong and tell her not to do this. She gets angry, dreams, cries, and emotional. Okay. So she does something wrong and then she goes, I'm going to throw something at you here. I'm suggesting you um, are right fighters, uh, you and maybe your partner. Uh, she must see that it's wrong to be wrong and it's only right to be right. If children who do something wrong and get very upset over it usually are in a household that it's not okay to be wrong. Failure is not an option. Uh, it's usually people who don't like to lose, um, often poor sports, um, a lot of competition going on. You fuss over the wins. The losses are like, oh, well, you'll do better next time. You know, I don't talk like that. I wouldn't say that to a kid. As if they have to do better, it's okay to lose and it's okay to fail sometimes. So, yeah, I failed all the time. That's how you learn. So that's usually, I could be wrong, but that's usually what grows that trait. When they get angry, when they don't get everything right, it, it's a learned behavior. They're not born like that usually. It's very, they're not usually born like that at all. That's something they've learned from you. So think about it. Am I right about that? I, I could be. I don't think so, but I could be. I'm going to read my top three tips for parenting teenagers. Uh, number one is you listen to understand and show empathy. You don't listen to gather information to lecture with. If they want your advice, they'll ask for it. They already know it anyway, okay? So when you get good at what I call silent listening, they're going to tell you everything and they're going to trust you. Um, okay, number two is you negotiate pretty much everything. It goes something like this. I want your dirty clothes in the hamper. What do you want from me? You don't do it with absolutely everything and there's are, there are exceptions and there's a few little tweaks in how you do it, but that's the general idea. And then, because you got to give them a say in how their life goes. You got to give to get with teenagers, okay? And then, number three with teenagers is don't sweat the small stuff. Save your energy for the big stuff if it ever happens, because you're going to need it, okay? So, don't micromanage. If they make a small mistake, just say, yeah, that was stupid. Wait to hear what I did when I was your age. Like, be relatable. Teach them it's okay to make mistakes. That's how we all learn. They always say the road to success is paved with failures. So, take that attitude with your kids. They're going to make mistakes just like you did when you were a teenager. You might not make the same ones, but toddler bites all the time. How do I stop her doing it? Check out my toddlers who hit, bite, etc. That might be a good fit for you. It's one of my mini toddler courses up above. But basically, it's all about consistent, corrective actions, not about words. You know, where, who was I talking? It was a client, I think. It must have been a client I was talking to. And uh, they said, I told her it hurts my feelings. You're expecting a two-year-old to give a crap about your feelings? You know, like... <laughs> It's just expectations, reality, like they're selfish. They don't understand, you know, your feelings. They might in the moment pretend to, but they don't really grasp empathy at two years old. They just don't. So that's like you're trying to have the mini therapy sessions with them. They're about, no, you don't bite, no, and then there has to be a consistent corrective action because they learn through repetition. It's not going to happen twice. It's not going to take two times to fix that. It's probably more like 100. So the repetition, repetition, but they're going to remember the time you do it wrong. You got to, you got to, that's why you only pick one battle, pick the biting. And then you're going to, you say, I'm just going to end this. Okay. Pick that one because you have to be consistent. If you forget one time to be consistent, they're going to remember that. They remember all your failures, not your wins. Toddlers whining about everything four years old. Well, by four, by three and four, they're preschoolers. A toddler is under the age of three. So, um, yeah, they're whining about everything. I would say they're old enough. I would say, you know, the tone of voice that you use when you say, I want that. Say, I'm not even going to answer that tone of voice anymore. When you talk to me like that, I won't even answer you. If you ask me nicely and you say something like this, may I please have, say, I will answer you, but the answer still might be no. So make it very clear. And you might have to say that a few times because you don't just ignore whining if you've given it attention before. That's not fair. That doesn't make any sense. So you have to explain things are changing. So, and you don't put no whining on the behavior board. That's in the attitude department. That's as ridiculous as put down, respect me, or stop being out of control, or stop yelling. You don't say that with kids. You don't ever address attitude with children. Please give examples of a corrective action with toddler. I'll give the easiest one. It's a bit of a cheat because it's the easiest one to do. If they hit with a toy, you say no, and you take the toy away instantly. So basically, the whole idea is you either remove them from fun, remove fun from them, or you can have them, you can actually take them away and put them in another room with you. Time out is when they go up somewhere alone. But you can just have them in another room with you so they're missing out on fun. you got to remove fun from them or remove them from some fun. Just for a minute or two. It's not a big deal. 
on YouTube. I have a three-year-old son. He always cries when other kids touch or take his toys. What should I do? Also, he's a picky eater. Okay, well, that's too good. I'll just answer the first one. So if he cries when someone else takes his toys, that means that he doesn't like to share. Or, But is it appropriate? Like, what I mean is, does he have friends over? What you can do is you can say, oh, he's just going to have to get used to this. And you're going to say, okay, we're only going to put out in the toy room or in the family room what the other kids can play with and put away his precious stuff. I had really precious stuff. <clears throat> I still am. I'm very fussy. I'm uh, but when I was a kid, especially kids would come over and wreck my stuff. Everything I owned was perfect from day one, right to I was an adult. I kept everything was in perfect condition. But friends would come over and they just disrespect my stuff and mess it up. So I learned at a very young age, mom used to say, well, put your Barbies away then or put your precious Barbie dresses away, the ones that you don't want ripped or torn or anything. So, yeah, teach just have this conversation with them. Say, you know, if you don't want to play, if you don't want to share that toy because it's your special toy. We'll put that away when you have friends over. So, yeah, you can sort of manage that and figure out why he doesn't like it when other kids want to play with his stuff. Or is he out and about at someone else's house and he cries? Too bad. He's going to have to get used to that. He'll learn.